This is a video tutorial on how to upgrade the firmware on your Sony action camera. You'll know when it's connected to your PC because you'll get an audio indication on your computer if you're running Windows and the LED will illuminate on the camera. The next thing to do is run Play Memories Home. If you don't have this software installed on your computer, it can be downloaded freely from the Sony website. This is what the application icon looks like on a Windows PC. From the program, if your firmware requires updating, you'll notice up in the Notifications tab, you'll have Pending Notifications here. You'll then also see a list of these notifications and what they do. Some in this list are the Software Update for Live View Remote, System Software Update for Action Cam, which is what we're after, Update the firmware, click on the details button under System Software Update for Action Camera. This will then redirect you to the Sony website where you'll be able to download the latest firmware. The actual web address for this is located here. If you don't have Sony Play Memories, another application you can use is the Action Cam Movie Creator. If you haven't downloaded that, you can also download that from the Sony website or by going in the Play Memories Home in under your notifications and click Detail and that will take you to a link for the website to download it directly. It gives you the option for Windows or Mac version. Action Cam Movie Creator icon looks like this. When running that program, you will see a link here saying update system software if you require system software updates, and a list on the side of what it will be updating, and the added bonuses and features that it's unlocking. Both of those ways will take you to this website where you can download the applicable software update for your system. In my case it's Windows 7. And click the download page button. This particular software update gives you improvements on live streaming and new functions in still image shooting. Point to note if you're scrolling through your camera and you see on the screen displayed live as per what is displayed on the website, then you do not require this particular software update. However, mine does. It recommends that you have at least three bars or more power. Mine's fully recharged. I agree with the terms if you accept them and download the software update. This one is 190 megabytes, or 189.10 to be precise. Follow the instructions to download and perform the update on your camera. This download may take some time depending on the internet speed. Mine was about five minutes. Once it's downloaded, you can then run it to run the firmware update. Now it's important to note that these directions are for Windows only, and specifically for Windows 7. There are slight differences with Windows 8 and, and higher, but the general gist of it is the same. Now I'm just running the, the file I downloaded. It runs its own extraction, where it unzips all of the installation files. It then tells you what you need to do. Now the first step is to close everything, but in this case I'm just going to minimize the web browser, but close all of the Sony software because that may interfere with the update. So earlier I had it connected, I've just disconnected it to make it easy to get the memory card out. So the first step is you need to remove your memory card. Put that somewhere nice and safe so you don't lose it. And then reconnect it to your computer if you've disconnected it. So make sure your camera is on. Just push a button. and you'll see USB is displayed. Once you've connected the camera to the computer and it's switched on, click the next button. The software will now verify it to make sure the connection is occurring.
Click the next button to verify the version of the update. On your screen, update will be displayed. Now it's important to note that the next button is the next button on the Windows software, not the next button on the camera itself. Verify the version of the update on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So basically what it's saying is your, your current firmware version down here is version 1 for mine, yours might display something else. And the version I'm going to update it to is version 2.0. Once that is displayed on the screen, you then need to safely remove the hard drive by clicking the safely remove hard drive icon. So for me it's down here and it's the one with the USB cable. And the one I'm at is HDRAS100. So just click that. Eject. Now it can safely be removed from the computer. Right. Keep the USB cable connected and press the enter button on the camera. There is no enter button, but we'll assume it's this. Now click the next button. Verifying connection to the camera for this update. And it's making the connection noises. It's detecting hardware down the bottom. The screen is still off. Please wait. Click the run button to start the update. Do not pull the USB cable out or turn the camera off during the update. Push run. Hopefully this will work. The progress bar is getting bigger but the camera is still off. The update is finished, and when it did, the camera turned back on, and it was reinitialized as a USB connection. This is the update has been complete. So now that it's complete, what you need to do is disconnect the USB cable, turn the camera off, remove the battery pack, put the battery pack in, and turn the camera back on again. So. Oh, it says live here, but we'll still follow the procedure of turning it off. And as I showed before, it's now got that live mode. We already know that we've got the new software version because we've updated it and we can now see that live function. So we can skip all the way down to uh, section 2, downloading and installing. Now it's important to note you need a Ustream account for this to work. Now this is so you can stream directly onto the internet. You can then go down and download this. And there's a warning box if you've got Windows 8. Saves it into your download folder. And once it's got there you run it, install it, click next and you need to maintain an internet connection for the PC to start and finish the settings procedure. And that's another thing, with all of these updates you need the internet to be able to get them. And you need good connection with capable of downloading a couple hundred megs each time. Now this is an example of the live stream. It's just connected up and you can see this radio station in here. also got audio. Network setting tool which is 7.4 megabytes now downloaded and I'll just run that.
Let's see what's in custom. So custom gave me the option to choose the installation folder and a desktop icon if I'd like one. And that's the only two options. It's not really an advanced option at all. Uh, standard will just default install it in the normal directory and create the desktop shortcut anyway. So it says, welcome to network setting tool. Through this application, settings required for live streaming will be transferred to your camera. Connect the camera that supports live streaming, turn it on, and click next. Um, it still hasn't detected anything. It's definitely on and it's definitely connected, but I always click next anyway. And it says we have confirmed that the camera supports live streaming, so that's good. Okay. Now, this program here is what you'll use to push your network information into your camera, such as your network SSID and password, so that way you don't have to physically try and type it into your camera. If it, now this is where you can put your upstream um, account details if you have them, and any social media stuff. If you don't have a upstream account, you can just click the connect button and it will give you a hyperlink to create an account, but if you do, you can put in your account details and log on. I just went through and created an account and it's still coming up with setup incomplete, so to fix that, you just click the connect button again and it's asking you, do you want to give it permission or allow, allow it to deny, so you got to complete that process as well, and then it will connect. It's taking me out to a website. And you can log on there as well to, to work out your live streaming. Alright, now that's complete. It says OK over here, and I can push that information to the camera. And done. Transfer complete. So I tried it again this time, and now it's come up on there and uh, you can it see the live stream. Bit of a delay, but we'll, we'll check out how much of a delay. Right, now it's pointing at me, at my face. on the camera, the three updates it gives you is burst shooting, motion shot, and a self timer, as well as some improved functionality. Now on the menu thing, screen, to access photos, you scroll across to photo. At this moment, it's on single mode, which is the normal mode it had on version firmware 1. Now if we go across to setup, push the button on the side, scroll across until you see drive it's a very odd name to call it but in that mode you get your single shot which is your normal one photo burst which will do 10 photos at once and M shot which is motion shot limited edition not too sure how that one works but I'll keep giving it a go later on um, so I'll select it into burst mode it takes you straight to photo and it'll take 10 pictures. And the, the count has gone down by 10, which means it's taken 10 photos. It's pretty simple. To get it out of that mode, you've also got to scroll across to set up and then go all the way across to drive. change it. So we'll try the M shot. So it looks like it takes one uh, one burst of ten shots. I don't know if it's if it automatically detects motion or, or how it works. Um, let's wiggle it around. Oh, we wouldn't have a clue how that works. 
and the other one is self timer. Um, I'll just change this back out of that multi shot back to the normal burst. And I'll go back in to show you self timer. So it's under self. Options are off, 2 seconds, 10 seconds, and back. So I'll put that on two. And there's your audible beep and then takes it. And the light will flash on the top to indicate it's taking a picture. When that light's extinguished on here, it's taken the photo.